Well, uh, my name is Desmond and I, I was born and brought up in Mumbai, but I uh, now I'm living in Karnataka and yes, I'm studying, uh, I'm doing a master's program in astrophysics at University of Potsdam and it's an English spoken master's program. Mm -hmm. That's very nice. And you told me like before the call that you just had your three year uh, Bachelor of Science degree, if I'm not uh, wrong. And then afterwards, you were able to like, you know, start your studies here because I see a lot of misconception that you cannot study without a four-year bachelor's program. So uh, tell me your experience there. Like, you know, how was it? Like, were you able to find enough universities and so on? Did you see people like telling you, hey, like you might not get admission? Yeah, I heard about this myth before and I was actually shocked because uh, many of my classmates and me as well got an admit in a German university. Some of them are in Cologne, some of them are in Bonn and uh, I am in Potsdam. So there are many examples like this. And uh, for me personally, I uh, did not, I applied to many universities and uh, I met most of the criteria. So yeah. Was it easy to like, did you find a response from many of them or like, was it like also like uh, some rejections because, okay, your program is just three years and like not four years or something? No, uh, I actually did not get a rejection due to that. Uh, my rejections were mainly because my course weren't theoretical enough. Uh, but uh, that is some universities uh, accepted, some don't like each of them had different criteria because of, uh, so each university have different research uh, oriented programs, right? And based on that, they look at our curriculum. And so I, yes, I did get some rejections because of that, but I did get acceptance, yeah. ECTS and stuff was not a problem because another thing that scares most of the people is, okay, um, three year bachelor's program in India, generally it tends towards like you know 150 credits or like something around this line and when the, you see when you're applying to the universities in Germany it's like 180 credits 210 credits uh, did you also see some problems there at that time so uh, in my course particularly we have a requirement of uh, physics and uh, maths but we also have to do some uh, some lecture in astrophysics and that wasn't there in my bachelor's program. So that I got by going to uh, a few extra workshops and classes. And that's how I built my uh, astrophysics section. But uh, for the other part, the credit points were complete from for the bachelor's program. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And like these workshops and stuff you took in India? Yes. Okay. That's nice. Let's talk a bit about the course assessment. So what kind of course structure do you have? What kind of subjects you have to study again? Like I have no idea about astrophysics, but maybe somebody who is like, you know, from bachelor of science and they want to like kind of understand this better. So can you like give us some more details? There? So uh, our uh, program is a two year program. The first year is mainly dedicated for uh, compulsory modules. And there are uh, five of them, uh, the astrophysics one and two, which uh, astrophysics one basically covers theoretical aspects of astrophysics. The second one covers a seminar and a lab. And then uh, the other modules are basically the current research areas or methods in astrophysics. Also, there's a, a advanced physics module because astrophysics. And uh, apart from that, the second year, uh, we have a research training. So in the second year, the third semester is dedicated for research training. And the fourth semester is a master thesis. Um, and then like the total degree is 120 credits. And if you want to do a PhD, that is also not a problem. Yeah. Uh, that specifically isn't a problem also because of how our lecturers are. Our professors are also from research institutes mm -hmm. uh, and actually work at observatories uh, around Potsdam. So Potsdam is known for uh, astrophysics. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so we can, if you network properly, you can get a good uh, PhD program. Yeah, the thing with PhD is like generally more tricky, like either like you get very lucky and you get like get a PhD position in the same institute where you're studying and your professors and like uh, supervisors tell you about it. Otherwise, like then it's like applying to so many different universities, sometimes individually, like sending them your research proposal. All of these things take a lot more time. Let's talk about your um, living costs and stuff in Berlin right now. So like how much are you paying for rent, for food, other things? Uh, so uh, I live at Studentendorf Schlachtensee. Uh, it's a Studentendorf as, uh, sorry, it's a student village as the name suggests. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's a, uh, it's a shared apartment. 
it's eight people here and the rent is about 440 euros 441 to be exact and my living costs is about 120 or 150 euros for groceries and stuff and then there is also the health insurance which is 110 and in total around 700 euros 750 mm -hmm. is suffice yeah now, the, the apartment rent is actually like expensive, like more towards the expensive side. Did you also find better deals or like how did you end up here? So uh, the better option for me would have been student and work, of course, because student and work, I think the rent is about 160, 200 euros. But this is a private residence, so it, it isn't government funded. Mm -hmm. So that was a problem for me. Okay, and like, uh, is it is the like rooms and stuff better? It's okay. It uh, it's fine for a student. It's fine. The the best thing about this place is that the international cloud, uh, the crowd. So mm -hmm. we have a lot of Erasmus students, and eight eight of us here. And every semester, as you know, Erasmus, they just come for a semester and they go. So we get to meet a lot of people from different countries, and that's really good about this place. Now, when you were coming from India, that's when, like, what was the biggest differences that you saw in studying, like, you know, between like your bachelor's versus the master's right now? Uh, so uh, in my bachelor's, my bachelor's wasn't very theoretical. So uh, in physics, we usually have a theoretical and an experimental aspect, and we did not have a very strong theoretical background. And right now I do struggle to catch up a bit, but I feel like it, it's doable. So uh, apart from that, uh, we also got to use our telescope. So this was another thing in our college. Uh, we had a telescope but uh, the professor the teachers did not know how to use it and also some of them did not were not ready to use it so it was gifted by isro by the way mm -hmm. to our college but the teachers used to not use it so that is why we did not get to use it and yeah so i do i did get to use the telescope here and it was a really good experience and yes the lecturer like the lectures uh, when i came here it was the covid time and so i did get to attend a few classes in person and that was pretty good but uh, apart from that it has been online lectures now but the next semester is going to be in person yeah mm. yeah I, I saw that i think to you dresden also like kind of have this um freedom that if you want to get like vaccinated uh, or if you don't want to get vaccinated whatsoever you can still like come to the universities or something but i think like in most of the other universities what i'm seeing is like you need to have like the vaccine or you need to be kind of like what recovered from covid in order to come like do you see something some similar reg regulations in university of potsdam or they're not clear yet uh, right now it uh, so they have this three things that is recovered vaccinated or tested and uh, that is the three guidelines they have been given in case covid cases increase but uh, at, at the moment you don't need a test but because this semester went on online they are just going online <laughs> at the moment they are in the flow but next semester yeah most of the people should get a vaccine and if the cases increase they have this emergency plan of vaccinated recovered or uh, get a test done perfect so um desmond any other like last tips advices or something else you'd like to share for the students learn german <laughs> That's the biggest advice that I would like to give because uh, once you come over here, of course, in Berlin, there is an international crowd and a lot of people speak English. But once you start searching for part time jobs to cover the exp expenses of rent and stuff, it, it is a bit difficult. Uh, if you do not know German, maybe at least B1 or B2, I think maybe B2 is better. But uh, yeah you need to learn german i i did learn german so i i have some basic knowledge but i still can't find the job for mm -hmm. german speaking so mm -hmm. learn german. yeah that's definitely very important so i mean like with, with jobs and stuff like in many um places it could be more difficult because it's just not so easy without german proficiency i see sometimes like people who like enroll in my job course the ones who are having better german proficiency they just like you know find a job very very easily but like the ones who don't have it like for them you either have to like look for some kind of startups you have to look for mncs like the kind of companies you can look for that becomes very limited perfect um so i think that was a pretty nice assessment thank you so much for taking out the time for joining me on this call